Well, what can I do for you? Put that old book away, Dad. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Are these supposed to be pictures? What's that? That, my dear young man, is a picture of the germ that causes tuberculosis. Tuberculosis? TB to you. Oh, that little thing? From that little thing comes that awful disease? It doesn't look like much to me. No? No. Do you know that that little thing is alive? Ah, uh, oh, blow me down. Quiet, please. <laughs> and it eats as you do. And it breathes. Oh, if that germ could only talk, what a story it would tell. But germs don't talk. No, but suppose he could. Suppose I could invent in my laboratory a special radio that could hear what he might have to say. Yes. That's an idea, all right. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are y'all? Oh, all right. Well, well, I suppose you'd like a piece of this banana, wouldn't you? Hmm? Hmm, it's good. Come along. Come on. There you are. There you are. That's a boy. Now, where's my Julius? Come on, Julius. Come on. There he is. Well, now, here. 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 Have a piece of carrot. Fresh and full of vitamins. Well, well. Come along, Archie. Come on. Come on, Junior. Come on. That's it. Now, can you all keep very quiet today? Hmm? Because I, I want to talk to T.B. the germ this morning. Yes, sir. T.B. the germ. There you are. Well, I've hit on it at last. With my new germ radio invention, hooked up to my microscope, and I've learned germ language, too. Mmm. Clever fellow, these germs. everybody. about yourself. Sure. I love to talk about myself. Exciting. Full of adventure. Your incubator up there is a pretty snug place for an old-timer like me, Professor. But I remember when I was a youngster, I lived in the lung of a nice lady, Aunt Matilda. <laughs> yes, yes, of course, old trooper. I remember Aunt Matilda. 
She never seemed very sick, but she did have a cough. Never thought much about it, though. Didn't she have a little nephew? right -o. Edgar was his name. Dear Aunt Matilda used to feed him, taste his food for him, to be sure it wasn't too hot. That's how I got into little Ed's lungs. What, Professor? Howdy. And once in Edgar's mouth, of course I made my way into his lungs. Well, what happened then? Gee, Professor, that was a nice place. Edgar's lung. So warm and pink and cozy. Of course, I was lonesome, sort of. So I got busy. <laughs> you know, we germs raise big families and us too. <laughs> All we need is a dark place in the body where soap and water can't get at us. Oh, how soap and water kill us. And Edgar knew nothing about all this? Oh, no. I guess he didn't even feel sick. But soon the cells in Edgar's body got busy and started to build walls around us. Oh, yes. That's how the human body protects itself. The cells of which it is made lock up the germs so they cannot scatter elsewhere in the body. So there we were, all bottled up, jugged like ordinary thieves. Edgar's body won that battle. Oh, me. Uh-huh. That's what we scientists call a tubercle. Uh, uh. Two, two, what? A tubercle. A tubercle in a medical book looks like this. A firm, round capsule. And in the center, the germ. But go on, TB. What happened next? Well, hind and starved. Some of us managed to stay alive for years, I guess. <laughs> Edgar grew up to be a handsome young man. Had a girl, too. <laughs> Worked awfully hard to make good. Was careless about his meals. Didn't eat right. Stayed out late at night when he ought to have been in bed. All that put a strain on his body. And one day, something happened. We germs saw our chance to escape. Edgar paid no attention, even though he had a cough and lost weight. We multiplied so fast, Edgar's cells couldn't keep up with us. So we spread and spread and staked out new plots. His girl was the first to take notice. The boy had no appetite. And he had no pep. Tired all the time. Then one day, we germs broke through a pipe. An artery that passed through Lungland. And a great flood of blood poured out. Edgar coughed up some blood. That scared him. At last, he went to a doctor who sent him to a sanatorium. There he rested. Nothing to do but get his body strong. Mm. Sad news for us. Oh, yes. I remember Edgar in the sanatorium. <laughs> that, that's where I got you, by the way. That's right, Professor. That sanatorium is a bad place for germs like us. No chance at all. They don't let any of us escape. Every patient has his own paper cup. And you know what? They burn these cups. Sure death for germs. How is it you weren't destroyed too? Well, 
The nurse sent some of Edgar's sputum to the laboratory to be examined, and I was in there. So the man in the white coat gave us a new home, a culture, he called it. Experimenting, I guess. He kept us in an incubator where it was warm, and there we grew. Well, I guess that's the story. And it was the man in the white coat who gave this culture to me. Do you know if Edgar got well, Professor? Oh, yes. He recovered completely. He's happily married and has a boy of his own now. <laughs> that's good. Another Edgar. I may die soon, but my tribe will get him too. We'll get young Edgar. Ah, no, you won't. Things have changed, T.B. Edgar Sr. had learned his lesson, so he took young Edgar to the doctor and had a tuberculin test made. Well, what on earth is that? Just a simple skin test. It tells if there are any germs like you present in a person's body. You don't say. Smart, eh? They can't see us hidden away, so they invent this clever test. Ah. Well, this test was negative. No germs in young Edgar's body. Suppose it had been positive, Professor. In that case, the doctor would have had an X-ray picture made of his chest, as he did with another of his patients, Mary, a sweet young girl from high school. Her test came back positive, and the doctor had this x-ray picture made of her chest. Gee, let me see it too. There you see the ribs. And here is the healthy lung tissue. And there, see that spot? That's a little tubercle, like the one in Edgar Sr.'s lung. It's hard and firm now. No germ will ever get out of that tubercle. And once every year until she's grown up, the doctor will make another X-ray picture. But, Professor, what's to become of all my tribe with that kind of thing going on? Sorry, old timer, but you're almost through. When all young folks get a tuberculin test and those who react positively get an X-ray, TB germs are going to die out. This is a fight to the finish. And man is going to win this fight. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Germ. So, that's our finish. <laughs> I see the day when tuberculosis will be licked. I see happy, healthy children growing up without the fear that their lives will be ruined by it. I can see parents happy with grown-up children. Parents who in the old days would have died an early death. I can really see this ancient misery disappearing. How about a cookie and a cool drink? Oh, thank you, dear. Oh, Mother, Daddy has just told us another of his wonderful stories. And, and when we are all grown up, our children are not going to get tuberculosis. Are they, Daddy? No, indeed, my dear. <laughs>